class. So for this, we're going to be talking about simplification and transformation. The idea is transforming something by simplifying it as a principle. This is used in art quite a bit, in, especially in abstraction. This is a pretty famous lithographs by um, Pablo Picasso, lithographs of type of printmaking. And where he took a bowl and a fairly realistic drawing of a bowl, and then he began the process of simplifying it in his style to become something that's very, very simple but still feels like a bowl. Now he's a cubist artist, so he's doing a lot of stuff that we're not necessarily going to do with this project. We're not trying to get to the point where it's so simple that you can't, that it doesn't have any of the type of feeling of the original bowl in it, but it's just a good example to get your brain going there. I'm going to show you some student examples of five steps of, of simplification. Your project is to do eight steps. So do not get hung up on the fact that there's only five steps on some of the student examples. I realize that you need to do eight steps. I'm saying it over again because people like to try to point this stuff out a lot instead of just believing the instructions. These are just examples for you to get the idea of. And I expanded the project to eight steps because I actually find it to be easier to do a few more steps and it's better for the length of time we have for this project to do a few more steps. So let's look at some of their examples. As it says on the project sheet, the first drawing needs to be as realistically drawn as you can. So this was a drawing a student, an object a student brought in, well, it was a miniature violin, and they did a pretty realistic drawing of it. Now, when you pick your object that you're gonna simplify, pick something that has quite a bit of information. By information, I mean enough detail. If you pick something that's a marble or a coffee cup, it's not going to work very well for this. Why? Because this, like in this one, there's a lot of different details in the object, so it can be taken away over time in each step. If you pick something like a coffee cup or a marble, there's not very much to work with. And so you're going to have a hard time doing anything very interesting. So because of that, I wouldn't pick a toy. I wouldn't pick a piece of jewelry that's really simple. I wouldn't pick anything like a comb or something with or a cup. You need to pick something that has some amount of intricacy to it. Okay, so this is our first step. Then they went here, took away the shading. See, they took away the shading. They also took away some of the extra details around the outside. Then they took down to this step. You can see, if you go through this quickly, you can kind of see how they are simplifying it. I'm skipping to show you with your eye. They took away even more detail, right? What did they take away? Some of the bridge in between. The extra, this thing's completely gone. The rest, the headstock is getting simpler. From there, they went down to this, so even less things. This is gone. This is still here. The headstock's really simple. She she wanted to keep trying to take away these F holes, but I kept saying to her, if you take those away, then this could be any instrument. It could be a guitar. It could be a lot of different things. We need those because we need to know it's still a violin. So what we ended up is taking away more of the strings. And I think this works okay. She probably would have been better off to just take away this part here, have this go into it. Could have simplified this, had the F holes and maybe that, and we wouldn't even need this string. But nonetheless, it works pretty well. Next one, this was a toy. Had enough detail on it for it to work. And you can see as she goes through, she took away a lot of the shading and extra details on the outfit. And then from there, took away even more of the detail in the clothing and then took away the nose and even more detail and finally even the eyes so all we had was the outline of the person their gestalt their overall silhouette probably could even gone further and take away the feeling of the hair and the collar and we still get it but it's getting really simple in a good way okay another object this was a ceramic object someone brought in 
Halloween type of decoration. I want you to notice in these, the ones that are in pencil, they don't stand out quite as well as the ink one. This is ink. I would prefer you guys to do this in ink because it'll stand out a lot nicer and be more finished feeling. A lot of detail in this. So they started just to remove all the extra textures and things. Then they went down to the next step of really removing some of the faces of things, but we still feel like it's that scene of the object. And then lastly, really barely down to almost anything. And actually this could even go further, which they did, to make things even simpler. We still get a feeling of Halloween, spooky house, but it could go even further to be honest with you, nonetheless. It's really good. All of these can go even a little further, even an example I show you. But yes, it's working really well. Okay, this was another toy. Again, not necessarily the best thing to pick toys because they're already simple, but this is a little dinosaur. It went down pretty far right away. It's a more simplified shapes, but still some shading. Then getting rid of all the extra, we still feel that it's a dinosaur. Then here, a little bit of shading, feeling the same T-Rex feeling. And then we still have a T-Rex here, but he's really angular. I think this is interesting to talk to you guys about, like, these are, this is the language of icons. You can think about it in a way, you're not making an icon, but you're making something that's simplified. Do you, I want to point out the fact that in this, it is still roughly the same size and shape of the original and he hasn't gone completely in the direction of making it like a totally different dinosaur it still has the feeling of it it's still legible there's still the arms and legs in the basic places same places for the same style of dinosaur object it's not totally randomly new okay this is a piece from a board game of some sort i can't remember what it was so the shading going away still the same shape getting away all the texture still have the same shape really really moving it down and then finally almost pure line work just but still feels like the same original it has the same legibility you could recognize it i'm going to show you an example of a student's drawing that they made that I'm going to use to do a version of this project. At the end, you'll see the thumbnails that they turned in with the project. Um, they large these drawings, these for the drawings they submitted, but they didn't work very well. So I just want to talk about this is their drawing. I used this idea by looking at that key to do this. So I want to show you how I would have done it. Firstly, first drawing, I use theirs to just create a new one in ink. Then I started taking away the writing, of course. I was like, okay, obvious place to start. Then the key, the key loop that was holding it. Then you can see here, I took away new drawing, the, the hole. And I'm also doing a few other things at the same time. I'm simplifying some of the other extra shapes ever so slightly cutting them down. What happened here? I took away this and I made some of these shapes more simple. See? change into this area then i took away even more of the detail on the side of the key and the top of it i'm taking away some of this stuff as well next up even more simple just getting all of this outline is getting simpler but it's still the same type of key and the side of it is still changing even less and less information shown down here even more of it's taken up taken away to the point where it feels like it's still the same type of key. That was my eighth drawing. I could have gone even further, honestly, and had something where there was barely anything here and maybe even a square box above, but I wanted to stop at eight and I wanted to still feel this type of key. What's important to note is that I didn't make a skeleton key. I didn't make a totally different type of key. I kept a lot of the drawing, the original, in it. The feeling of the original. I want to show you one of the in-between ones I did. This was number eight that I have as my final one. This was a version of it that I did beforehand. And I wrote some notes on here. Not right, the loop throws it off. See how I kept the loop? Can simplify the key on the side shapes. See how I had extra information there? And 
I said, this is a version of number eight that I did, but it didn't work for me, so I needed to redo it. You have to redo these drawings a couple times some of the time. You can't just say, oh, I did it once, it's done. You need to spend some time looking at it and flipping through and seeing, okay, how's the transition working? Is it working? And actually redo some of them. I really want you to do it in ink because it will stand out a lot better. And, you know, I spent time on this. Even though it's simple line work, I actually spent quite a bit of time making sure it was changing enough to become really simplified. In this one, I'm still not happy with this fully because I could have made this squared off a little better and I probably didn't need this little step down. But nonetheless, it's looking pretty good. I could have gone up going on to and it would have read, but it needed to be like this particular type of key. I'm going to show you the drawings that someone turned in for their project and we'll talk about. These are the thumbnails that they turned in and they did big versions of these exact things. The problem with these is that none of them are like the key. They're randomly drawn, not keeping the style and shape of the original object, and they're not trying to unpack it bit by bit. They're just random. Here's a random drawing of something kind of like a key. Here's a random key. Five, six different versions of something. None of them even look much like the original. Okay, that's not the purpose of the thumbnails. You have to actually do them in a way that's connected to the original and try to simplify it in steps. Say here in red, it's likely that you'll need to do more than 10 thumbnails to be able to figure this out. 10 is a minimum so you can figure it out. I want you to actually use the drawings, the small drawings, to figure out what you're trying to do. So not just draw every random thing, but see how some of these are totally different shapes. They're not even connected. For example, look on this object, all the little spiky parts that where the key goes into the tumbler are on the left side. They decided to put them all on the right. You need to keep them, if your object is drawn originally on the left, then you need to keep them on the left, and so it feels like it's connected as a transformation of it, just like I did here. Transforming the key till it becomes as simple to complex. Right? We're showing doing it quick to show it like an animation. See, so you're doing you're doing a removal and simplifying it. This is very useful in the world of art. Not just, you know, of course it's useful to be like Picasso and be simple. It's also very useful in the world of design. And your next project you're gonna be after this, the final project the semester, you're gonna be kind of working with the idea of making your own logo and logos, and a lot of logos are, are made by simplifying an idea down. So this is to help you with that and to help you understand transformation, how things unfold and how you change them subtly is a really important principle in art and a way that people work in a lot of ways and have a, a voice to say something interesting. So pick an object that has enough, a key that they picked, their key, was a little too simple to be honest with you, but I figured I'll try it with a very simple thing that I have some leftover examples that somebody didn't take. It's not bad, they didn't do a terrible job. It's not like they're not a terrible person. It's just um, no one's ever terrible for doing this. It's just an example to show you kind of how to learn from it. Um, and I talked to them about it when they did it and they actually redid the project and improved it and turned it in again, so it was fine. The point is though that you need to really think about working in a way where the object is still legible at the end. You can still read what it is. It, the particularities aren't completely gone. Like the violin, if you got rid of the F holes, it could be a guitar, an upright bass, any number of different type of instruments. We would know it's an instrument, but we wouldn't know it's a violin. So you have to think about what's the important thing about it that makes you know that it still is that. All right, guys, if you have questions, please email me, ask in the discussion boards, and uh, I'll do a couple more demonstrations of some things if need be. All right, take care. Hopefully you're staying safe out there, and I'll see you soon in my video announcements.